Assalamu alaikum. I hope everybody enjoyed their break. I'm sure um, it was uh, uh, short for a lot of us, but Jazakumullah khairan for all of you brothers for coming back on time. Inshallah, our next topic is a very important topic, and that is uh, the topic of the rights of parents, and that will be addressed by uh, Sheikh Maqas Khwaja, who is also a graduate of Darul Ulum, and he is currently serving as an imam in the Greater Toronto area. Without further ado, I would like to call upon Sheikh Maqas. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا عليه مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الجنة تحت أقدام الأمهات وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رضا الرب في رضا الوالد وسفط الرب في سفط الوالد أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام If an individual came up to us one day and ask us to safeguard two very precious gems of his with the condition that in return upon safe take care uh, caring for these two gems in return he will reward you with ten thousand dollars or a million dollars I'm sure that none of us will refuse an offer like that. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of us present in this very room, in this blessed house of His, a more greater, a more virtuous, a more precious offer than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us all with our parents, our mothers and our fathers. And upon this great blessing of His, He has promised us that if we care for them, and if we attend to their needs, then in return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely grant us paradise. One of the most unique aspects of this beautiful deen of ours is that just as much importance this being gives to the worship and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, as much, if not more, importance is given to the rights of the people, the hukuk al-ibad. We hear in many hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given importance to treating the guests properly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he states, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَالْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفًا That whosoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last day, then he shall treat his guests kindly and he must attend to their needs. In other ahadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has given so much importance to treating your neighbors kindly and attending to their needs that the Sahaba would think that the neighbor would even get inheritance 
after the person's demise. This is how much importance the Prophet ﷺ would give to the rights of the people, the hukuk al ibad. And the reason why we say that, if not as much rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not as much, then even more reason being, is that if we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, na'udhu billah, we just have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek for His forgiveness. However, if we nullify, and if we do not fulfill the rights of other people, the hukuk al-ibad, then not only do we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and his, seek His repentance, but at the same time we have to ask forgiveness from those individuals whose rights we have taken away. So this is the beautiful aspects of this great deen of ours, that just as we have to obey the injunctions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise, we also have other rights to be fulfilled, which are the hukuk al ibad fulfilling the rights of those individuals around us. To the extent that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at the time when he was passing away on his deathbed, the last few words of advice the Prophet ﷺ gave to the Sahaba Ibn Allah that safeguard your salah, safeguard your prayers, and that which your right hand possesses. Attend to the needs of those servants, those slaves that are under your company, that are under your authority. Do not let anything nullify their rights, make sure that all their rights are being fulfilled. These are the last few advices before the Prophet ﷺ is passing away from this world. This goes to show the importance that this deen has given to fulfilling the rights of other individuals and the hukuk al ibad We live in a society today which is totally oblivious of the rights which our parents, our mothers, and our fathers deserve. This society feels that by devoting one day out of the year called Mother's Day and Father's Day, we have fulfilled all their rights, we have fulfilled and compensated them for all their sacrifices which they have done in our upbringing, and everything that they have done for our nurturing, and everything that they have provided through us throughout our lifetime, we have fulfilled them back by what? By assigning this one day in which we go to them with flowers, chocolates, and gifts, and by being kind to them on this one day, we have fulfilled all their rights. And we see that on this very day, that now is not even a custom to fulfill the rights of our parents. It has become a whole marketing tactic. It has now become a means of selling products. Just this past year, $17 billion of merchandise was sold for Mother's Day and Father's Day. This goes to show the reasons behind why that these days are being pushed and these are put in front of the public's eyes and marketed to such an extent that now we cannot even turn back. So this is the society that we are living in today. This is the importance the society has given to those two individuals that have sacrificed everything in their means to make sure that the children are brought up in a good environment and to make sure that the children are given all their requirements and all their needs that they deserve. There's a metaphor in the English language that a family life is like a bird's nest. When the children are young, the parents attend to their needs as we see with the birds. The mother feeds the baby, goes out, the father, they bring food for the babies while they are in the nest, and they provide the provisions for them to nourish themselves, and so that they can get stronger, and that they can attend to their own needs. And after they're able to get their own provision, they're able to take care of themselves, then those little infants, then those little birds are able to go off on their own without ever looking back to those guardians of theirs who took care of them and who attended to their needs. So this is the metaphor which has been set for us. 
This is the lifestyle that surrounds us in this day and age. But we have forgotten that mankind is far more greater than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ That verily we have created man in the greatest form and fashion. We have to run societies, we have to build civilizations. We have a far more greater than a far more greater task than one of the smallest creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we compare our lifestyles, our standards, our principles to the one of the smallest creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to mimic their ways and their lifestyles? We have a far more greater task than that. So therefore, we have to look at the lifestyle which this beautiful deen, deen Islam has set for us through which we can not only get guidance, but at the same time, we can fulfill the true rights which our parents deserve and the true obedience that we can offer them in return for all their favors that they have done upon us while we were young. We all realize, we all are aware of the great emphasis that Islam has given to the obedience of parents. The Prophet ﷺ, he narrates in one hadith of his, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud he asked the Prophet وسلم, O Prophet of Allah, أَيُّ الْعَمَلِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ O Prophet of Allah, which act is more greater to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which act is the most beloved in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet ﷺ replied, As-salatu ala waqtiha, that a prayer at its mandated time. Then this Sahabi, Sayyidina Abdi Mas'ud, he asked, Thumma ay, O Prophet of Allah, then what, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ replied, Bibr al-Walidayn, the obedience to one's parents is given the most importance after offering salah at its correctful time. From this we realize to what an extent and what concern the Prophet ﷺ had in regards to respecting, caring, and attending to the needs of our parents. To the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about obedience to one's parents in the Holy Quran, we will come to realize that wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising us to be kind and to be obedient to our parents, we will find that it is immediately after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning His own rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَاعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشِيكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not associate partners with Him and be kind to your parents. قُلْ تَعَالَ وَأَتْلُوا مَا أَرْرَمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشِيكُوا بِهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be kind to your parents. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And remember that time when we took an oath from Bani Israel that they do not worship anyone except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they be kind to their parents. وَقَوَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, has decreed upon you that you worship none other except for Him, and that you show kindness to one's parents. From this we can realize the importance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in these various verses of the Holy Qur'an, that immediately after mentioning His own rights, that you do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and that you be kind to your parents and that you fulfill the rights of your parents. In many places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also mentioned, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْنِ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْنِ حُسْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated upon you that you show kindness to your parents and that you fulfill their rights. It is one of the aspects of this deen that certain things are conditional and incumbent upon others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ 
That if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, O Prophet of Allah, if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and forgive your sins. So we all can realize from this that we cannot have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without having the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in our hearts. So this love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is conditional and is mandatory upon us loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are various different aspects such as this in deen as well. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Qur'an, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَلَكَ بِهِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِجَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He states that not only be obedient to your parents, but by being obedient to one's parents, you are not only thanking me, but at the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions that أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِجَيْهِ that by being obedient to your parents, you are not only thanking them, but at the same time you're thanking me as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting this condition upon the obedience of one's parents, that by being obedient to them, you are also thanking me, and this is fulfilling my right, because I have ordered you to go and be obedient to your parents. This is why we see that it is from amongst the beautiful aspects of this deen, that whenever our deen commands us to carry out a task or to fulfill someone's right, it immediately informs us and it mandates upon us the different ways that we can go and continue and fulfill these rights of these individuals. Likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to have respect and to be obedient to our parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just leave us on the sidelines and let us figure out the rest as to how we can continue to obey them. How can we go and truly fulfill the rights that they deserve? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us each and every aspect of respecting them and accordingly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us various different ways through which we can fulfill their rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in the Holy Quran regarding these rights of our parents. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord has created upon yourself that you worship none other but Him and that you be obedient to your parents. إِمَّا يَبْلُوهَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْشِ If one of your parents or both of them reach old age during your lifetime, then do not even say uf to them. To really understand this first advice in regards to being obedient to our parents, we can take an instant for example. A parent, he asks their child, O oh son, O oh daughter, can you go and take out the garbage? Or can you go and wash the dishes? Or can you go and run an errand for me? And immediately, this cry comes out from the child's mouth, Oh, uh, do I have to? Or why don't you tell Hassan or Amr or Abu Bakr, I'm too busy right now. Sometimes it may be just a deep breath or a deep sigh. It may not even be a word. But in this ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is informing us that do not even say the word uf, let alone anything greater than this. Sayyidina Ali, he mentions in the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stated, had there been a word greater than the word uf in its lightness, in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have also mentioned that or would have mentioned that instead. This is the lightest form of negligence or lightest form of negative reaction we can give to our parents and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that forbidden. And reason for mentioning the old age, it is not conditional. It does not mean that this is not permissible at the time of their old age. But in fact, this just goes to show that this will most likely happen when they are old. 
Reason being, when they are old, they tend to say things which may bother you. They seem, they might become irritating at some times. And when they're old, their authority upon you may become weak. You may be more mature now. You don't feel that you have to attend to their needs. You don't feel that you have to fulfill their rights now. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us this. But this is the time when they are most in need of ours. This is the time where they are more in need of us fulfilling their rights and of us fulfill, uh, providing their needs and attending to what they need to fulfill. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in this ayah, do not even say this word uf. This word uf has such a meaning in it or anything, or any word, it may be in any other language which causes something in the hearts of our parents, which causes a slightest reaction in our parents' hearts that I had done so much for my child. I had done so much throughout his upbringing and now this is the way he is compensating me. This is the way that he is paying me back for all those favors that I had done upon him. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even made this forbidden. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the ayah, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not scold them. This is the time and age in which they may say a lot of things. Sometimes we feel that our parents, they're repeating things. They ask us things time and time again, the same questions. We have forgotten our past. When we were young, when we were small, we would, when we were learning new words, Oh Father, what is this? Oh Father, what is that? And our parents, out of love, they, they would want us to ask more and more questions. When we are learning to speak, our parents can't wait to hear the new words that come out of our mouth. The new words, the new vocabulary that we are picking up. Our parents cannot wait to hear those words. And now they have reached this age in which they are beginning to lose. And they are beginning to forget things. And we are now in return getting upset and we begin to scold them. A story comes to mind at this moment. An aged father is sitting with his mature elderly son. When a pigeon flies by and sits right in front of them. This father, he has pretty much lost his senses. He's not aware of his surroundings. So he asked the son, Oh son, what is that? The son answers, Father, it's a pigeon. And then the pigeon flies away. Few seconds later, the same bird comes by. And the father asks the son, Son, what is that? Father, it's a pigeon. And then the pigeon leaves again. After a few moments, the bird comes by. And father, he asks the son once again, Oh son, what is that? Father, I just told you, it's a pigeon. Now his tone is getting a little severe. Bird leaves, comes back again, the father asks for a fourth time. And now the son is getting upset. Didn't I just tell you it's a pigeon? How many times are you gonna ask me? And at that moment, the father says calm. Later on in the day, the father takes out a diary and he hands it over to the son, dated back 30 years. And he tells the son to read this diary. I am sitting in the park with my five-year-old son. A pigeon comes by and sits in front of us. And my son asks me 20 times, Oh father, what is this bird? And every single time I reply back to my son saying, Oh son, this is a pigeon. And every single time it increased my love to answer my son's question and to answer to his regard that he is learning something new. We can take other instances in our life, lives where we've come across situations like this. Sometimes they, it, it, it becomes annoying. We, our parents may be of such an age where they are repeating things or asking us things over and over again. But it's just for a split second if we think back to when we were small, when we were young, when we were so dependent on them, we could not even attend to our needs of relieving ourselves. However, they were there to fulfill those needs of ours. At night, when we could not sleep, when we were sick, our parents would make their sleep forbidden upon themselves. 
They would forsake their sleep for us just so the sun can get some relief and some comfort. And now we have reached this age in which we are repaying them back in this manner and this form. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He indicates to us, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not scold them, do not rebuke them, do not say anything which will hurt their feelings. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And say to them a gracious word. Reply to them in the most beautiful and in the most softest of manners. The Mufassirin rahimahullah, commenting on this verse of the Holy Qur'an, they say that when we talk to our parents, talk to them in a soft tone. And with words that are fulfilling their obedience and are being submissive and being very kind towards them. Do not speak loud when you speak to them. Do not talk back to them. Be very gentle when speaking to our parents. Be very gentle to such an extent that we are submissive and that we acknowledge those sacrifices that they have done for us when we were young. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ That lower for them the wing of your mercy, lower for them the wing of submission out of mercy. Be humble to them in such a manner that whenever they demand or whenever they request anything from you, you are present and you are able to fulfill their needs at that time. The Mufassirin commenting on this ayah has said, لا تمنع من شيء أحبا That whenever they desire something, do not refrain them and immediately bring that thing forward to them. During the time of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, a sahabi had a date farm. Sahabi by the name of Usama radiallahu ta'ala an, and his mother desired from him the pulp from inside the date palm. And at that time, the value of the date palm was worth over a thousand dirhams. In this day and age, we can say ten thousand dollars for instance. So now, this mother has the desire for the pulp from inside the date palm. This sahabi, he immediately went and he took out the, date, the, the pulp. Now remember, when you take out the pulp from that tree, now that tree is barren. It cannot ever give fruit again. You have basically taken out its, its, its form of reproducing. And now it is basically finished. So this Sahabi, when he was asked that, why did you do this? You, this tree would have given you fruits for ages. And he immediately replied by saying that, when my mom desired something from me, I did not feel comfortable to re- refuse her, to immediately as she requested this act from me, I provided this for her. This is the way that we should be serving our parents. And we know that our parents will not ask us for things which are, which are out of our control. Our parents will only re- request from us and demand from us those things which, in, which are in our capabilities which we are able to fulfill and which we are able to require, which we are able to provide to them. So whatever small thing or great thing that they may request from us, we should be present to fulfill their needs at that time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the last form and the last principle of fulfilling our rights, fulfilling the rights of our parents. وَقُلْ رَبِّ حَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Then after you have done all the different forms of obedience, after you have fulfilled all their other rights, there may be some shortcomings. There may be some places where you have left some gaps. You may, by mistake, have disobeyed them at one point in time. How can we fulfill those gaps? Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, have mercy upon them, just as they had done our upbringing when we were small. This is such a beautiful aspect of fulfilling their needs that it does not only, it's not only limited to their lifetime, even after their demise, even after our parents have passed away from this world, this act of obedience towards our parents still continues till the day of judgment. And this is amongst one of the Continuous charities that a person can leave behind is a son or a daughter who prays for them and who seeks for his or her forgiveness. 
So this is an act of Allah uh, uh, of ours, which will be continuous and which will continue to show obedience of ours towards our parents. The Prophet ﷺ has stated in the hadith that there are few acts of obedience towards our parents which continue even after their demise. First of which being seeking forgiveness for them and asking for their asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy towards our parents. Thirdly, fulfilling an oath of theirs which they had made and they were unable to fulfill during their lifetime. And last but not least, being kind and generous towards their friends and their families that they have left behind. These are a few ways that we can be obedient towards our parents even after they have left this world and they have passed away. Once a sahabi came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him, O Prophet of Allah, what are the rights of my parents which I must fulfill? The Prophet ﷺ, he replied in just three short words, Huma jannatuka wa naruk. They are your paradise and they are your hell. The Prophet ﷺ, in just three words, answer the question which would take psychologists and doctors, books and books to explain. And in just three words, the Prophet ﷺ did not only explain what are the rights, but in fact, he explained what will be the consequences and what are the ways of fulfilling these rights. If we fulfill the rights of our parents, through this obedience towards our parents, we will attain paradise. And God forbid, if we show any shortcomings, and if we are unable to fulfill these rights of our parents, then na'udhu billah, this will be the path which will take us towards Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from this. We can all acknowledge the importance which this deen gives to our mothers, and the importance that this deen has given to our parents. But there's a special privilege which the mother has because of the hardships and because of the difficult times which she may have gone through and she has gone through, not only during our birth and after our arrival into this world, but even prior to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He acknowledges this favor of the mother upon her child in the Holy Qur'an by stating, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا That she carried him, she bared him in hardship and in pain for the nine months which our mothers carried us. وَوَضَعَهُ كُرْهًا And she delivered him in pain. After the pain and the pangs of death which a person goes through, it is mentioned that the most severe pain that a person can go through in this world is the pain that a mother goes through during the time of delivery. So this is the pain that our mother goes through to bring us into this world. And Islam, this beautiful deen of ours, acknowledges this favor of our mothers upon us. وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا And the uh, nursing and the uh, caring of this child is for 30 months. These are the three favors which our mother does upon us even before and at the time that we are born and a few months after that. Regarding this, the Prophet ﷺ has stated in the hadith, once his hadith came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked, O Prophet of Allah, مَنْ أَحَقُّ النَّاسِ بِحُسْنِ صَحَابَتِي Who is most deserving of my kind behavior? The Prophet ﷺ replied, Ummuk, your mother. Then the Sahabi asked, ثُمَّ مَنْ قَالَ أُمُّك Then your mother. And the Prophet, the, the Sahabi asked for the third time, ثُمَّ مَنْ The Prophet ﷺ said, Ummuk. And for the fourth time when he asked, the Prophet ﷺ replied, ثُمَّ أَبُو so for these three favors and for these three times that our mothers are independent in our caring and tending to our needs, this deen has given us three rights which are greater and which hold more value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as compared to the father. Regarding this, 
an incident that took place in the time of Sayyidina Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. An individual was doing hajj, performing hajj, while he's carrying his mother on his back. And Ibn Umar sees him that he is doing tawaf around the Kaaba with his mother on his back due to her being very weak. After performing his tawaf, this individual comes to Sayyidina Abi Umar radiallahu anhu, and he asked him that have I fulfilled the rights of my mother by making her perform hajj to such an extent that I am even carrying her on my back while I'm doing tawaf. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he replied, La wala bi zakhratin wahida. That no, not even by one breath have you fulfilled her rights and have you compensated her for her sacrifices. That one breath of agony which she took while delivering you, this, all this is not even equivalent to that one pain of agony and that one breath of agony which she took while she was delivering you. Sayyidina Uyiz Qalani rahimahullah, he attained such a high status in the eyes of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala due to the fact that he sacrificed attaining the companionship of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the sake of caring and attending to the needs of his mother. He was alive during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam residing in Yemen. He requested to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet of Allah, I wish to see your present. I, I, I wish to be present in your company. However, I have an ailing mother to whose needs I am attending to. The Prophet ﷺ immediately replied that, "No, you need to stay and attend to her needs." And after the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, then he visited Makkah al-Mukarram, Madinah al-Munawwara. He came to see the Sahaba. And immediately the Sahaba Allah Ajma'in approached Sayyidina Awais Qani rahimahullah and asked him to seek forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Sahaba. Sayyidina Awais Qani is, is amazed that the Sahaba are coming to me. And at this point he, he asked and he requested the Sahaba that why are you coming to me? You are, you accompanied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You, were, you are Ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi wa ajma'in. Radiallahu an wa radu an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. Why are you coming to me to this? Umar radiallahu an, he replied by stating that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before passing away, he informed us about your qualities and your traits. And he also gave us his advice that when Uwais comes, to Madinah al-Munawwara, ask him to seek forgiveness on your behalf, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept his du'as. This is the high status that he was given by caring for his mother, that the Sahaba are coming to him and requesting him for forgiveness, requesting him to seek forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keeping in mind not to belittle our fathers and not to cause them any pain, Deen has also given a great stature and great honor to our fathers as well. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in the hadith, رِضَى الرَّبِّ فِي رِضَى الْوَالِدِ وَسُخَطُ الرَّبِّ فِي سُخَطِ الْوَالِدِ That the obedience and the, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the pleasure of our, our father. And the, dis, and the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the displeasure of our fathers. This goes to show the honor that this deen has given us. That we must adhere to their rules and we must adhere to their regulations. We cannot do anything regardless of our age and regardless of our maturity. We must consult with them and we must take their advice for every task which we pursue. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ has also stated, Anta wa ma'aluka li abik, That you and your wealth are your father's possession. You and your wealth are in the possession of your father. And some narration, it has also been mentioned that anta wa ma laka li abi, that you and whatever you possess, whether it may be your money, your cars, your houses, they are all in the ownership of your father. 
This does not mean in any way whatsoever that our father can abuse this right. But this goes to show the honor and the dignity that this beautiful deen has given to our fathers. In regards to what our compensation will be in this world and in the hereafter for our obedience and for our caring towards our parents, the rewards are enormous. But just to take a few ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and to keep these in our minds, which will be a form of encouragement, and which will be a form of us continuing to show obedience and caring and tending to our needs, the needs of our parents. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in a hadith, مَنْ بَرَّ وَالِدَيْهِ زَادَ اللَّهُ فِي عمري, That whosoever is obedient to one's parents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lengthen his lifetime, will lengthen his life. And in other narrations, it also explained, and Allah SWT will increase His provision and increase His risk. Sometimes, aside from the hadith and the verses of the Holy Quran, we may need examples from this worldly life to understand and to comprehend the hadith and the teachings of this beautiful deen. And this is why, just to give us a little insight on how this is possible, by being obedient to our parents, how is this gonna lengthen our lifespan? lifespan? A study was done at Harvard University regarding an issue to see whether healthy relations has an impact on how long a person will live in this world. Does being kind to your family and friends have an effect on how long you will live? So to perform this study, the professors, they took 200 people, and they studied their data for 25 years to see what's gonna be the reaction. Out of these 200 people, 100 people were those who had good relations with their parents and their families. And 100 people were those who had terrible relations with their parents and their families. After 25 years, upon completing this research, they came to the conclusion that 70% of those individuals who had poor relations with their parents died of either cancer, diseases, or heart attacks, and very, various other natural, serious causes of death. On the contrary, those 100 individuals who had good relations, only 18 or 20% of them died from the similar causes. Keeping this in mind, that this is not in any way whatsoever to confirm or to adhere to those teachings which have been taught to us by the Prophet sallallahu We believe in the verses of the Holy Qur'an and in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu to their fullest without needing any of this worldly data to, for us to have an assurance. But at the same time, this is something through which we can relate to and something which helps us understand of, to, as to how these two things are linked and how these two things have something in common. In regards to this specific manner, the Prophet ﷺ has also said in the hadith, Birru aba'akum, tabarrakum abana'ukum. That be kind and be obedient to your parents. In return, your children will also be obedient to, to you as well. From this, we can take two different aspects. Not only will our children see how we are treating our parents, and in return, they will be also kind and be obedient to us. As the English saying goes, that apple does not fall far from the tree. When our children see how we are caring for our parents, they will see that this is how we should take care of our parents. On the contrary, when they see that we are being disrespectful, and we are being disobedient to our parents. Likewise, 
the reaction of our children will be when we get older. An example of this, I was speaking to one of our teachers, Sheikh Sufyan, Dawud Barakatuhu, and he was telling me that my young child, he, he asked me that, Oh Father, when I get older, can I have your car? So, Sheikh Sufyan, he replied that, if I give you my car, what am I going to drive? He said, Father, you won't need to drive because I'm going to drive you everywhere. Because that's what you do to Grandpa. You drive him everywhere. So likewise, when you get older, I'm going to drive you around everywhere. You won't need your car. So we don't realize the impact our actions have on our children's lives and what lessons they learn from the smallest things that we do. And in return, this ripple effect continues to when they get older and they continue these same actions and these, and these same attributes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to be kind and to be caring to our parents while they are alive and also fulfilling their rights after they have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts of deen. Wa akhiru da'amana alhamdulillahi wa bin as we all can very well see in the light of these uh, ayahs and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there is no way for us to pay our parents back for anything they have done for us. Regardless of what we think, how they treated us, they did or they did not do things for us, there is no way that we can pay them back even for what they have done. Don't look at the things that they did not do for you. If you just look at what they have done for you, you can't pay them back for that either. And this is, of course, something that is very clear when we look at not only the ayahs of our Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you check your records of morality and ethics, you would realize there is no way that we can pay them back and be grateful to them in return for whatever they have done. We always find a nasiha from scholars throughout the history that I like to share with you about respecting the parents. They always have experience and have seen it in their lives that a person who respects the parents gets two things in this life. One is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of the risk to this person. Through the obedience of the parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of the risk to this person. Number two, as you heard it in the hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in this person's life. When you find yourself being totally useless, no time to do anything, and you don't have anything to do either. So really you don't have nothing to do, and still you don't have time to do anything in your life. There are no achievements. There is nothing you can do. When you look at your daily schedule, tomorrow, okay, I'm free tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll do these, thing, these things. But the whole day went by and you didn't achieve nothing. When you see this thing happening in your life, the thing that you need to do is go back to your parents and apologize to them. Ask them to forgive you for anything wrong you may have done. Because this is the effect of disrespecting them or upsetting them, hurting their feelings, the barakah of the time is gone. This is what long life means. That you will get a long life, which means a lot of barakah in your time. Even if you live for 50 years only, your achievements will be greater than the people who live for 100 years. But if you live for 100 years with disobedience to parents, you would see that you did not even do as much as people would do in two or three years. So when we see our time is going useless, and no achievements in the life, time is just being wasted, 
go back to your parents and ask them to forgive you. The barakah in the rest and barakah in the life. As we all are complaining about time these days. And subhanallah, this thing goes with that. No barakah in time because there is no obedience to parents. So if we, we, we want these two doors of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open to ourselves, the doors of rest and the door of the barakah in time, then we need to fulfill our responsibilities towards our parents. Through that, inshallah, we will get these two doors of the rahmah open for ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us.